Greetings and welcome back to the 69 Pillars of Success. Let's talk about the two most attractive qualities that you can have as a human being. The first one is easy, it's confidence. Confidence is by far, and this is especially true in romantic relationships, confidence is the most attractive characteristic in a mate. The other one is empathy. That one's a little bit harder to define, a little bit harder to wrap your head around why that would be attractive. And more importantly, it's easy to understand how I display confidence, but how do I display empathy? And there's an ancient uh, scripture, I think that was written by um, Paul, or Saul, <laughs> as he was before he changed his name where he talked about, to the Greek, be a Greek, to the Jew, be a Jew, to the Gentile, be a Gentile. And he, what he was saying was, you know, the, the quote that came years after that was, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Now, to a certain extent, right? You don't want to compromise your values or your ethics. However, I find that in this world, we have a tendency to want people to accept all of who we are, but we're not willing to put that same energy and invest that same type of empathy into the heart and soul of another human being. It's like, why can't people just love me for the way I am? Do you love people for the way they are? Especially if they disagree with you on something, right? You know, I always use politics in these examples because it's an easy, it's an easy system to, to pick on because everyone that wraps their head around like political affiliations, like they're rooting for their team, whether it's Republican or Democrat or independent or whatever it is, we deal with so much, you know, I talk about the cognitive biases, which is another series you should watch on my YouTube channel, uh, where it's the certainty bias. I am certain that I am right, mm. and everyone else needs to get with me. And you listen to both sides of that argument, screaming at each other about, I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm right. Okay, so you can't both be 100% right. It's just not a reality, but you watch a lot of people argue in a way where it's like, I know I'm 100% right, and you are fill in the blank if you don't agree with me. You know, you're a hippie, or you're a bigot, or whatever derogatory terms we levy at people because we're not willing to wrap our head around just how nuanced we are as human beings, that none of us are always anything. Sometimes we even question our own beliefs, which is hard for us because we don't like what's called cognitive dissonance. Talked about that in another video, meaning we don't like to hold two opposing thoughts in our brain because it makes us feel like our brain is melting, but you can develop your brain to hold those two things and begin to compartmentalize. Now, for some of us, the way we're wired, me in particular, it's easier than other people. It's easier for me to compartmentalize things and not personalize things than it is for most people. So I accept, I got, I have to thank God I got that part of my DNA. A lot of other people didn't, but it doesn't mean you can't develop it. It doesn't mean that you can't exercise empathy for someone who completely disagrees with you. You know, I told the story uh, of the atheist guy that got in my face and started yelling at me about how absurd my beliefs were. And so to disarm him, I said, yeah, I can see totally how a lot of my beliefs would be absurd. And, and, and he didn't know how to keep talking. Cause it was like, he was expecting me to come back because he was insecure with, oh, I'm gonna fire and brimstone and, ah, and scream. And I was like, I'm not gonna scream. I totally understand how the idea that so many of the things that scripture talks about sound absurd. They do. There's no need to pretend that they don't. I can still believe things, whether I believe they're absurd or not. And I can see his point. I stopped. I had empathy for him, the things that he was criticizing about my faith. And I said, you know what? Um, yeah. Yeah, I can see how that's absurd. Now, all I'd ask you to do is also wrap your head around the fact that some of what you believe is absurd too. And frankly, from my perspective, I think it takes way more faith to believe what you believe than what I believe. Like what I believe is not really that much of a stretch compared to, hey, there was nothing and then there was something. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. There's no creative energy behind that. And that's not fair. Not, not all atheists believe that there's no creative energy. They just don't believe in the concept of a God. Uh, and I'm oversimplifying that. There's nuance there too. But the point is, I showed him empathy. I didn't need to prove myself right. The only people that need to prove themselves right are people that are insecure and they don't believe 100% that they're right. So they need to prove it because it gives them, mm, now I feel better because I don't have to 
consider that maybe I'm wrong because that's uncomfortable, right? But, you know, the soldier always questions. The philosopher always questions. Socrates interrogated the truth. And I like to think I take after him in that regard. Not that I'm the next Socrates or anything as arrogant or pompous as that, but I like to think that I take after those principles that he operated with. And you gotta have that empathy, right? And that's why I started with that one, because that one's harder to wrap our head around. But if you wanna be attractive to other people, be like them, to the degree that you don't have to compromise your values and ethics. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. People like people who are like them, right? Do you think I hang around people 24 hours a day that hate everything about my personality? No, nope, I don't. But when I'm in that group of people who don't share, let's say, my values, I've worked in places where the values of the organization and me, I mean, it wasn't even like this. It was like just complete not. Okay, like they would pay lip service to my values and then totally not do any of them. And I'm like, that's, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. Not at all. But when I was in that environment, I can adjust, not compromise who I am, but I can compromise talking, for example. I can just shut up, let them believe what they want to believe, even though I think it's violently incorrect. I don't need to say that because I'm not going to, I'm not the CEO of that company. I'm not going to change anything by saying, you know, we're wasting you know, millions of dollars every year doing this when we could be using that money to do this and actually getting a better ROI for the company. And then you know, the group disagrees with me, okay, then I'm shutting up. I did my job. I did my duty to say, hey, think about it. We thought about it. You're crazy and wrong. Okay, I'm crazy and wrong. So let's let's go waste the money. And I changed the word waste to let's go spend the money and do the party. Let's do it. Woo! Like, I can take on, while I'm in an environment like that, the mindset and the emotional, uh, or really the mindset and the beliefs of the people who are in that world. As long as I don't have to compromise ethics or values, right? That's where I draw the line. Like, if you're going to ask me to do something unethical, then I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to be kind of a stick in the mud and be hard to deal with. But as long as what you're asking me to do isn't completely unethical, I'll live with doing it what I think is wrong. And I won't give you a hard time because I think you're wrong. I'll shut up about it, do what I got to do. And kind of like Shawshank Redemption, every time I go back to my room, I'm pickaxing my way up out of this joint because you can't live in that space forever it will drive you nuts okay i'm not saying like i'm some stoic sage on a mountaintop that can just take doing something like that over and over and over again forever you can't right you need to dig your hole and get out of there but while you're in it when in rome be like the romans that empathy makes you very attractive whether it's in a romantic relationship a job relationship or otherwise confidence the easier one to talk about I mean, when was the last time you wanted to date someone that had no self-confidence you know, a woman who just, I'm fat and I'm ugly, and who wants to be with that person? Hello, sir. I am filming a show. Is there something you need from me? I'm not going to edit this, by the way. Well? I need to film, though, so don't... If you need something from me, let's let's talk about it. Do you need something, or are you just saying hi? I'm just saying hi. Okay, so hi. Hi. I love you. Give me a hug. You can come on camera and give me a hug, but I don't want to interrupt the show too much more than I already have. Ah, I love you, man. See you later. See, confidence. <laughs> confidence to be able to keep a video going despite an interruption. It's attractive, isn't it? I'm going to end it right there. I love you guys and ladies very much. Remember that we are stronger than I. We're almost home, friends. Hang in there. We're going to make it. See you on the next one.